Good morning, this is Brent with Lycan Smoker Sports, and I've been getting a lot of emails and messages and private messages asking me to go over some different valve train, uh, rocker arm options for the Ford FE. And uh, there's quite a few options for, for this engine, um, starting with the factory stuff and moving on up to uh, the aftermarket. But uh, my plan for this video is to just show the different types of, of rocker arms and valve train uh, components and, and just go over the pros and cons of each one and the strengths and the weaknesses. So in the very basic, um, you have a, a factory style rocker arm shaft like this. They are not polished um, as you see on some of the aftermarket rocker arm shafts. Uh, the wall thickness is is not as thick, and I'll measure these for you here in a second to show you the difference. And um, you'll you'll see factory uh, rocker arm stands, and you'll also notice that uh, the fastening method for the factory stuff was bolts down through the stands, and the factory. Uh, rocker arm setups did not have end stands so the end of the shaft was not supported and instead of solid spacers they use springs to keep tension in between the rocker arms and spread those apart. So the wall thickness on these factory replacement shafts is about 175, 175 thousandths. The wall thickness on these heavy duty shafts are about uh, almost a quarter of an inch as I just took a rude measurement with a set of calipers and they're about 235 240 thousandths so the factory setups had two different uh, types of rocker arms one was a non-adjustable rocker arm and the other was an adjustable rocker arm they were both shoe style uh, rocker arms which means that there was no roller tip uh, the the pad that the rocker arm has on the end is fairly wide and it contacts the valve stem and will leave a pretty wide pattern. Normally, uh, if you see a pattern, um, you know, 180, 200 thousandths wide, you're, you're doing pretty good on the geometry part. The, the rocker arms in and of themselves are pretty stout. Uh, I've used the factory non adjustable rockers up to 440 pounds of open spring pressure with some hydraulic roller stuff. Uh, they work fairly well on, on a lot of hydraulic roller applications, even up to about 7,000 RPM. The, uh, the saving grace when you do something like that is to use the, the heavy duty shaft so that you don't get any, um, flexibility or deflection in the shaft and it's not so much as important on the center stands that you use a billet stand but it's really important on the outside to use a, an end stand if not then you have a rocker arm uh, here's your stud or your bolt then you have this rocker arm sitting out here and all your spring loads are are acting upon this end of the shaft which is unsupported uh, I have ran uh, both of those factory uh, rocker arms, the non-adjustable and the adjustable, up to about 7,000 RPM um, with uh, roughly 650, 660 lift. And um, like I said, it, it's just you have to be really careful about your contact pattern between the rocker arm and the valve stem um, just because that shoe is, is so wide. In terms of push rods, the, the factory non-adjustable rocker arm uses a 3 8 ball to, to fit inside of the rocker arm. The factory adjustable rocker arm uses a 3 8 cup end on the, on the push rod in order to actuate those. So in terms of pros and cons, um, the pros is you may have a lot of the factory stuff laying around. If they're not worn out, if the, if the clearance is not excessive, then uh, in a lot of cases, they are good to use. Save you some money. Uh, there are also even some 
high quality uh, rebuilt factory stuff uh, from companies such as Rocker Arms Unlimited and, and that sort of thing where they won't break the bank, but will give you a, a fairly decent rocker arm to go with your package. So the, pro, the pros are low cost. Um, the cons are the shoe style rocker arm tip. And uh, you also have a limit on how much spring pressure and, um, and lift you can run on those. So as we move away from the factory stuff, we get into the aftermarket. Um, this is this will be my next, um, I guess, iteration going from the factory stuff on up. This is my uh, non-adjustable roller tip rocker arm that I have available. Uh, I have put these through a lot of torture to test these. These are made for me exclusively. Um, Harlan Sharp makes these for me. They are roller tip, uh, bronze bushing fulcrum, and they use a cup pushrod seat. So that allows you to use uh, a standard ball ball pushrod that's available for, uh, you can get those off the shelf for your small block Ford or big block Ford or small block Chevrolet or whatever. So they're readily available. You don't have to um, go with a big 3 8 ball tip. You don't have to do a cup tip. I have tested these up over 7,000 RPM and with about 700 pounds of spring load. So um, they will handle pretty much what you whatever you throw at them. Uh, the pros is that you don't have the adjuster hanging off the back, so you lose a little bit of weight there for some higher RPM stuff. Uh, roller tip so you can get about a 50,000 wide pattern across the valve stem um, These oil through uh, Either the shaft or through a push rod so you can use either one um, The cons is that they are not adjustable. So if you want to use these on a solid cam you can uh, it takes a tremendous amount of focus and um, push rod length checking and lash cap shimming and that sort of thing. And right now I've got it stuck on my finger and I can't get it off. Um, and I have done that with some solid roller stuff to test it, but uh, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. So if you're going with a solid cam, uh, these probably are not the rocker arms for you, but these are also made to slide on to, uh, they come in just a hair undersized. So if you have a worn factory shaft, you don't have to replace your shafts. Uh, these will slide right on if you use them with a brand new shaft. Depending on the shaft manufacturer, you may have to hone uh, the bushing a little bit. But these are made to fit within uh, the, the size constraints of a factory rocker, so they're the same width and, and all that stuff. Next rocker arm, uh, Aftermarket setup would be the T and D Street Rockers. I use a lot of these. Um, they are excellent rockers. They have a, a needle bearing fulcrum, so you can choke off the oil to your rocker arms a little bit more. They are a roller tip and they are adjustable, and they also will oil either through the shaft or through the push rod. Um, I have personally ran those up to about 700 pounds of a spring load. Um, what happens though when you get to that kind of setup um, is that those four 3 8 rocker stu stand studs, um, you get you start to get some fretting because everything is just moving around. So when you're dealing with loads such as that, especially with an aluminum head, um, and you know you're dealing with a lot of spring load and a lot of RPM, I personally would switch to the TND race rocker, the paired rocker, which I'll show you here in a second, um, or so that you don't get a lot of that, that fretting and, and unwanted movement. In the past, I've done some things like pin the stands to the heads or uh, use a locator bushing to keep the stands from moving around. That seemed to work fairly well, but I know for the do-it-yourselfer at home, you don't want to get into all that machine work and setup. But uh, the TND stuff, is, is really good quality. Uh, the pros is that it'll handle a lot of spring load. Uh, it'll oil through the push rods or through the shafts. 
the cons is you're starting to get a little bit of uh, expense going with that setup. And um, as of right now, they're kind of hard to get a hold of. So I was quoted the last time I quote, asked about a shipment. Uh, they were quoting me about 12 weeks to get some in there. Now here's a another aftermarket setup, and uh, this is made by Harlan Sharp. Um, I have these made for me as well, um, but these are not exclusively made for me, so if you called them up, they would probably be happy to, to make this setup for you. Um, this is a, a needle bearing fulcrum rocker arm. It is adjustable for solid cams if you choose to do that. And these have a cup adjuster so that you can run a ball push rod. And these will also oil through the shaft or through the push rod. Um, comes with a complete kit. So you get the shafts, the end stand, the stands, the spacers, rocker arm with the adjusters. They are a roller tip. So these are, uh, these are the rocker arms I'm going to use on my tunnel port dyno mule. And um, they will hold, uh, they will do what we need to do, and, and then some. So pros of these, needle bearing fulcrum, less oiling, a uh, little bit more um, strength in, in, in the fulcrum part. Uh, roller tip, adjustable cup adjuster so you can run a ball in push rod it will oil both ways a uh, whole lots of load the cons are again you're starting to get into some price here these are about 1200 bucks and sometimes you can find them available sometimes not but you can count on harlan sharp being high quality stuff by the way these um these rockers that I'm showing you now have a very wide body for extra loading. There's the difference between my rocker arm and this adjustable needle bearing fork or rocker arm. There's probably, I don't know, about a quarter inch difference in width there. Big difference. So that means it'll support a lot more load. Along this same type and quality are rocker arms made by uh, comp cams. I have personally not used some of their, their rockers for the FE and uh, also Precision Oil Pumps offers their own uh, rocker arms and shafts and stands set up. I actually use a lot of their stands and end stands. Excellent quality, um, usually sitting on the shelf so when you call an order uh, they ship out immediately but um, also high quality parts. And as we move on up into strength and stability and higher end stuff, we have this TND uh, paired rocker system. Now this system uh, gets away from the traditional mounting of the four three eighths stand studs and uses this subplate that uses the head bolts to hold everything down to the head. So in times past, um, I have found that on an aluminum head and about 600 pounds of, of open spring load, you can pull the stand studs out of the heads. And that is not a fun thing to find out. Um, it requires a lot of repair work and that sort of thing. So when I do a solid uh, camshaft, solid roller camshaft engine with um, over 600 pounds of spring load, I will automatically switch to this style of rocker arm. These are pretty much bulletproof and um, because of the way that they anchor the rocker arms to the heads. So this plate, uh, you have to do some machine work to the cylinder head to make these work. Um, you have to mill the stand pads down on on the heads in order to get this subplate to fit. Once that's done, then this uh, mounts to the head down to the block. And then 
this other plate bolts to this, and then each individual rocker arm bolts down to this plate. So very, very strong. Needle, bear, needle bearing fulcrum. These will only oil through push rods only because when you uh, mill the heads to get this to fit, you pretty much do away from or do away with your passage that comes up through the head to oil through this uh, through the shaft. Um, ball ball push rod. So common parts there. And you can get them pretty much in any rocker arm ratio that you want. Uh, these are one eights and one seven fives. So one seven five on the exhaust, one eight on the intake. Very high quality stuff. This is pretty much um, what I consider to be the ultimate in higher end rocker arm setups for, for most of your aftermarket and factory heads. So uh, somebody on one of the other videos where I showed uh, our new tunnel port dyno mule asked why I'm not running a solid roller. Um, on a tunnel port head, if, um, so I, I'm planning on a, a pretty healthy camshaft that would require a lot of spring load. And in order to get stability for that valve train with that specific setup, I would have to go to something like this. And when you use this setup with a tunnel port head, uh, the tunnel ports have water in areas that a traditional low riser and medium riser head does not have. So when you mill for this subplate assembly, um, you have to do a whole lot of careful uh, measuring and milling. And sometimes you can get into a spot where you have uh, hit water and you have to weld and, and redo things. So um, I didn't want to get into that on, on a set of tunnel port heads. So I switched to um, a billet core solid flat tappet camshaft, which will, uh, the, the spring loads that that cam will necessitate will be a whole lot less than, uh, you know, the 750, 800 pounds of open pressure that I was planning on with a roller cam. So that will free me up on what I'm able to use for a rocker arm and will allow me to not uh, have to do any milling. And the billet steel core flat tappet stuff along with the DLC coated solid flat tappet lifters, that setup does not require a break in. So you can start them up um, just like you would uh, a roller cam. So getting back to this, uh, the pros, just ultimate strength on this, adjustable uh, rocker arm setup, ball push rod and push rod oiling um just very high end the cons are you're talking about a lot of expense here so uh, this setup runs between 1900 and 2000 dollars plus the machine work to make it all fit so what i'm going to do now is shut up and just put some slides up on the video showing each rocker arm type their pros and their cons along with some basic pricing and that sort of thing so you can see for yourself um, after that the video will be over so i uh, just want to say um, at the end take time to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, your views mean a lot to me and your comments mean a lot to me and i appreciate all those things Hope you're having a good Labor Day and a good long weekend, and uh, I hope to see you again this week.